Hey guys, what's going on? Am I just gonna do the show by myself? Time's a waste and I'm a busy lady, let's go. Yeah, we need to get this show rolling. Sam, how about I have co-host with you today? Uh, Jimmy, come on. You're, you're a little old and <laughs> a little ugly if you come to this for this show. I'm sorry. Sam, can't you do something about it? You're into all that Harry Potter stuff. Isn't there something we can do? Actually, yeah, what do you got for Actually, us? yes. Lucky for you guys, being the Harry Potter fan I am, I happen to carry Polyjuice Potion on me for occasions just like this. Give me one second. Accio Polyjuice. Polyjuice. Yeah, Polyjuice. Give me I've a second. I've seen the movie. I think I know what you're up to. Needs my hair. Because everyone knows no one's as fabulous as me to co-host with me. So So I'm still going to co-host? Yeah, but you're going to look like me. No. Come on, Dewey. Come on, do it. Dewey, drink it. Chug, 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 chug. chug. Oh, Sam. Oh, don't be a baby. Come oh. on. Oh, I don't feel so it's good. It's not that bad. Oh, Matt. Oh Jerry, my God, Jimmy! You all right? You all right? Hey, help him up, Sam. Here, here you go. Here you go. You're okay. You're okay. What did you do to me? You look great, except I don't think this shirt's gonna do, and you're gonna gotta accessorize a little bit, and we gotta do something about that voice. So let's go. Come on. Come on. It's okay. Hello, I'm Samantha Sanders, and I'm Samantha Sanders. <laughs> On this week's show, we'll be bringing you highlights from Megacon, Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival, aerial shots of the Legoland construction, several updates from the Magic Kingdom, a contest to win tickets to a pie buffet, and much more. April Fools! This really isn't Jimmy Transformed. I'd like to introduce you to my twin sister, Courtney. Welcome to the show, Courtney. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Let's get to it. We'll be bringing you the latest attractions, news, and information from all around Central Florida. If you'd like more details about the things we cover on the show, you can find it on our website at attractionsmagazine.com. Science fiction, fantasy, and comic book celebrities and fans filled the Orange County Convention Center last weekend for the Mega Convention. As usual, producers Matt and Jimmy couldn't pass this one up. They were there with cameras in hand. Watch this video coverage of the event and see if you recognize the celebrities and who the fans are dressed as. You're here in Orlando, capital of all the theme parks. Have you ridden the Hulk roller coaster? No, because I'm too scared to go on the roller coaster because I'm a big person. Because you're a big person? Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm intimidated by roller coasters. I would think the Incredible Hulk isn't afraid of anything. You're afraid of roller coasters? Well, maybe I'll do it today. All right, right on. on my lap. We'll ride it together. Okay. What's it like being here at Megacon? I love it here. I've always loved to come to these conventions. The people in Florida are fabulous. They come out in droves and we're having a ball. Do you ever get to go to the attractions? I have done. I have two kids. I've been here many times. <laughs> Check it out, it's Hercules. Hey, Kevin Sorbo, welcome to Megacon. It's good to be here. It's been about six years, so I'm glad to be back. All right, uh, hey, I gotta tell you, in New Orleans, do you ever get any chance to go to the attractions? You know, I get out here actually quite a bit. I've, uh, I've, uh, my brother lives in Tampa Bay, and my wife's sister lives in Tampa Bay, so. All right, so you not, get to Florida. Michael Dorn, everybody. It's Wharf. Michael Dorn, let's talk about being a pilot. What's your favorite aircraft? Uh, the F-86 Sabre. It's not the Starship Enterprise? Nope. F-86 is a real airplane. That's just a, a, play, a set, you know. All right. The Enterprise is just a set. When you get to Orlando, do you ever get to the attractions? Disney no, World? Or, you no, know? I don't. No. Uh, I'm, not a big, I'm not a big attraction guy. You're not? Not really, no. Well, you're fly, he, he's flying jets. I know. So a roller coaster doesn't quite compare. Although I did, although my first, one of my first voiceover jobs was I did the, uh, the an announcement for the Epcot Center when it oh, was first built. That's awesome. Yeah. Good piece of trivia right there. Yeah. All right, so I found an H.G. Wells time machine here. Did I get that right? That is absolutely correct. All right, I spotted it. Now tell me, how do you get into a convention with this big contraption here? Well, luckily I made it so it moves a little bit. I got my little start button right here, and, and there I go. Oh, it's actually powered. Yeah. It's day two. I'll be back again tomorrow, and just be looking out for the day 27 on the date. Day 27. It'll, the date will have to change. Yes. 
But that'll, that's gonna happen anyway, so you don't really need a time machine for that. This is very true. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm here with two guys that got movies coming out this summer. I've got Thor and Captain America. Tell me, guys, what's it like having your own major motion picture? Well, I'll tell you, uh, I've never seen a movie before from where I come from. I'm Donatello. Raphael. Now your hair, that's your real hair. Oh, yeah. I come from Asgard. Asgard. Leonardo. <laughs> Michelangelo. Right, now, do you find that the, the Mohawk works with the ladies? Nah. Uh. G? Captain America. Tell me, what's it like being part of S.H.I.E.L.D.? It's very, very nerve-wracking at times, but it's nothing compared to WW2. Yeah, it's a chick repellent. I, I think the goggles are the chick repellent, not the hair. I don't know. G Captain America. But Captain America is a guy, and you're clearly not a man. Clearly. How about uh, some of these ladies, some of the things they're wearing? They're pretty smoking hot. I like it. I kind of, I'm married, so I kind of see I've noticed. You haven't noticed? No, no, I, no. I didn't either. Somebody else told me about it. Really, the biggest thing I face is this whole time warfare. I mean, these motion pictures of yours are a lot different than the talkies I'm used to. I don't even know what this guy is. Oh, but he's got a boombox, and he's rocking out a Megacon. Where do you even find makeup like that? It's actually makeup for the Tin Man, you know, from the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, but didn't he get cancer from that? <laughs> now you tell me. Oh my God. So, I mean, how far does how far does the green go? Only as far as you can see. T? T. <laughs> I, I don't think I can even ask that. Can I ask that? It, it kind of looks like a wedding dress. T. <laughs> Sometimes this job is so much fun. I got to tell you. So, uh, MegaCon. <laughs> Wow, that looked like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Why didn't we go? We could have worn our Wizarding World robes. I know, but we have to save up for LeakyCon in July. Duh. For those of you that are lame enough to not know, LeakyCon's the Harry Potter convention that's happening this summer, and we're really excited. Oh yeah, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Meanwhile, Legoland Florida is opening in October just outside Orlando. So get ready, kids 2 to 12. This theme park is designed just for you. Sam, you got to take a hard hat tour and helicopter ride to view the construction progress. Mm -hmm. How was that? It was awesome. I had never ridden a helicopter before, so it was super cool. It still looks like there's a lot to be done, but according to a construction manager, they'll be doubling the amount of crew members to make sure they meet the October deadline. The 150-acre interactive theme park will have a mix of more than 50 rides, shows, and attractions. I was also able to talk with the general manager, Adrian Jones. Let's listen to what he had to say. All right, guys, we're here with Adrian Jones, the general manager of Legoland Florida. Thanks for having us, Adrian. It's Welcome. a pleasure. So we were talking to Craig, the construction manager, earlier, and he did say that we are on schedule for an October opening. Is that right? Absolutely, yeah. We're, uh, we're not giving any dates out at this moment <laughs> in time, but uh, we're, we're absolutely on schedule, and we're looking at a, 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 an October opening. All right, excellent. Now, we were perusing the calendar that's been posted, and it looks like there's going to be some closed like, days in November and December. Is there going to always be closed days? <laughs> Yeah. And the, some early closing times, is that the plan? We, we, we basically put a calendar on because we were getting a lot of uh, requests of, you know, when are we open, we need to plan our visits. And what we did was we just, we went in with a, a calendar that we've, we've used very effectively in, in California. Okay. And uh, we've done that for now, but those dates are subject to change. We, we want to move towards being in a 365 day operation. Right. But for right. the here and now, we thought that was the most, the safest way to go about it. Okay, excellent. And after the park is open, do you guys have any expansion ideas, plans? I see you've kind of got a water park going on back there. We have a million ideas, trust me. Um, uh, let, let, let's be focused first and foremost. If the park is not successful in the first instance, we're not going to expand and we're not going to be putting future investment. But, you know, you've seen it at other Legoland parks. Yes, we will put new lands into the park. We will look to open the water park again and we may, may look into accommodation. And that's what we're doing at all the other Legoland parks. Right. Why wouldn't we do it here? At the moment, though, it's all about getting Legoland Florida established as a theme park and a viable option for, uh, you know, people, tourists, tourists coming down from Orlando and Tampa. Okay. And speaking of lands, um, we've been having some questions. Is there, are you guys going to have a Star Wars mini land here right now? or? Well, we, we, we haven't got any plans to open with a Star Wars mini land. Okay. Obviously, California are a, a little bit more advanced in, in, in that. But, uh, you know, certainly we've got expansion areas within our mini land. And, uh, you know, hey, if it isn't Star Wars, maybe it's something else in the future. Like but, Harry Potter? Uh, who knows? <laughs> that would be cool. 
People are really getting excited about the new Legoland, especially those who live in Winter Haven where it will be located. When our producers were at Megacon, they had a chance to interview Todd, a Legoland enthusiast from Winter Haven who is also a member of the Greater Florida Lego Users Group. Very excited. I actually live in Winter Haven and I, my kids, I've got three children, they're very excited for it. Uh, we see a lot of activity going on out there. Uh, they've got a ride that uh, is raised up in the air. They've recently painted the old um, hanging roller coaster, the orange and blue one is now blue and dark blue. And so there's a lot of activity going on out there. Looks like they're starting to fill their roster of employees. I eat lunch frequently around there and they've got a lot of employees now with Lego shirts on and Lego IDs. So it's clear they're, they're really ramping up. So it's pretty fun to be having lunch and see those uh, Lego, Lego folks come in. You know that Legoland Florida is just around the corner. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, we, we have a pretty good working relationship with the park. We know a lot of the people that are being employed there. Uh, the retail manager and stuff like that. So we're real excited. A lot of old friends from Lego. So uh, what uh, personal Lego projects you got that you're working on right now? Well, I uh, just completed the uh, big uh, geodesic dome here. Um, this is kind of our big moon base project. We build to a standard so everybody can kind of bring their projects together and it kind of looks like a big huge moonscape moon base project. Now I'm a video guy and I always, I get on YouTube and I watch these stop motion Lego videos. They are awesome. You ever done any of those? Yeah, I, I, I've attempted to do a couple. It, it's a lot of work, a lot of hard, you know, thinking things out and, lo and logistics and planning. But I, I'm a big fan. I watch as many of them as I can. And with YouTube, it really makes it easy to get to those videos. Hey, YouTube fans, how about you send us a Lego video with some theme park stuff? We'd love to see your Epcot or your, your Universal stop action Lego movie, that'd be cool. That'd be awesome. How about you make us one? We'd love okay. to see that. We'll oh. do. Right on. This Sunday, April 3rd, Ellen DeGeneres, one of our personal favorites, will be taping two episodes of her daytime talk show at Universal City Walk. Unfortunately, there are no more audience tickets available, but you can still join in on the fun. Everyone is invited to the Riff Raff Street Party, where you can watch the show taping on the City Walk Plaza stage screen. You'll be able to watch the show's musical performances live. Duran Duran will be at the noon taping, and Kelly Clarkson will be performing at the 3 o'clock show. Last week, there was a ribbon cutting ceremony for the new Skywalk Bridge over International Drive, linking the Rosen Center Hotel with the Orange County Convention Center. Besides the Rosen Center Skywalk ceremony, they also celebrated the opening of a new bar in the hotel lobby called 9840 Tapas and Tequila Bar. The Epcot Flower and Garden Festival is continuing through mid-May. Besides all of the gorgeous gardens, flowers, and topiaries, fairies are playing a big role in the event this year. Yeah, and kid reporter Mindy and I paid a visit to the fairies garden and played around. Take a look. What little girl wouldn't want to play around in the Pixie Hollow Fairy Garden? That's why I brought kid reporter Mindy to come along with me. Come on, let's go. Oh look, there's Rosetta and Vidya. Oh, that's so cool. I guess guests can line up and meet the different fairies, get their autograph and picture with them. And I also heard that Tinkerbell and Terrence come out too, so that would be super cool for anyone who loves fairies. And what have we got here, Mindy? Look. Oh cool, it looks like one of the fairy houses that guests made. Oh, it's a little teacup set inside. I like the well, that's cute. I know, it is cute. You don't think a fairy's being so small, but I her. <laughs> Samantha, look at the fairy. Oh yeah, that's so cute. It's so cool how they have so many impressive topiaries around the festival. That's and cool. all our favorite Disney characters, right? Yeah. I know, it's so cute. <laughs> and they've got some fun Pixie Hollow games going on, including this cool crayon rubbing station we got here. Yeah, you pick this sheet of paper in your favorite color crayon, and you can place it on this sign and scratch in your favorite fairy's name. And here's a hint. Whenever you spot a fairy topiary, there will be a sign that matches. Hey, look, there's Rosetta. Yeah, she's my favorite because she has red hair, like me. <laughs> I like her because she's a flower fairy. Yeah. All right, what's over here, Mindy? What's going on here? Well, it looks like there is a fairy playground, and over oh. there there's a little topiary with Terrence, and he is one of the pixie dust fairies, so it looks like you can play around with pixie dust. Oh, that's cool. It looks like bird seeds, me. <laughs> What's going on here? Pixie dust, I guess? Pixie dust. Woo! <laughs> I like to call this path the enchanted fairy forest. Let's go. Let's go get our force on. <laughs> 
Here we are in the nature. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel the forest. Can you feel it? Yes. I Very have, forest. Yeah. <laughs> the enchanting plant. Ooh. Well, that was kind of short. That was cool. I like the playground better. Yeah. <laughs> So here's the fairy playground. <laughs> Sam, do you like this fairy house? Yeah, I do. It's super cute. I like that little balcony they've got going on. Yeah. There. <laughs> it's so small. This one. one. Yeah, it's got to be my favorite, right? Yeah. Yours too. Look how intricate it is. It's like two stories. They got a little garage over there, a bridge. It's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> so detailed. Mm -hmm. So, Mindy, what did you think of the fairy garden? It was my favorite part of the flower and garden festival. Now I want to go home and make my own fairy house. <laughs> Sounds like fun. The new spring edition is here, and it's awesome. Wait until you see it. Inside there are in-depth stories about the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival. We got SeaWorld's new show One Ocean, the Fantasyland expansion. There's also a story all about Disney's newest cruise ship and much more. The new issue is available for purchase on our website and will be at your favorite major bookstore and in our free iPad app soon. Another phase of the construction process is underway at Busch Gardens Cheetah Hunt. We reported last week that the last piece of the 4,429 feet of roller coaster track had been put in place. The next phase was done this week. It involved making sure the cars glided smoothly along the entire length of the ride. They also checked the ride envelope, the space around the car and rider when arms are fully extended to make sure there was ample Cranes and pulleys were used to drag the car around the track. With this testing, they are another step closer to having everything ready for the Cheetah Hunt's opening on May 27th. Ezra, Phineas, and Gus, the lovable trio of hitchhiking ghosts in the Haunted Mansion, have been brought up to date. Besides their new eerie blue glow, they are waving their hands back and forth, thumbs out, in a much smoother, more realistic manner. The projections versions are still appearing on the covered mirrors instead of in your doom buggy with you. Since the last section isn't quite finished, we're still hoping the hitchhiking trio will once again hitch a ride with guests soon. And now it's time for Stars in the Parks! Jesse Tyler Ferguson, who plays Mitchell on ABC's Modern Family, Casablanca, Casablanca, and his boyfriend, Justin Makita, were seen recently at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Toy Story Mania. And they were also spotted at Universal Orlando with Woody Woodpecker. Town Square Theater, near the main entrance of Magic Kingdom, will officially open this weekend as the new meet and greet location for Mickey and the Disney Princesses. Not only do they get a new home, but a new fast pass system will be available as well. No more waiting in long lines. What a fantastic idea. Seriously. In celebration of Disney World's 40th anniversary, D23, the official Disney fan club, is holding a members-only event, Destination D Walt Disney World 40th, on May 14th and 15th at the Contemporary Resort. The special event offers an exclusive look at Disney World and will feature Disney legends, Imagineers, entertaining presentations, rare screenings, and much more. And even though it is a members-only event, they have just announced that D23 members can now bring up to three guests to the event. As part of this same celebration, the D23 Great Disney Scavenger Hunt is a fun way to explore the park with your family or team. The Scavenger Hunt is open to the public. You can get more details on their website at d23.com. It looks like Disney has plans to add another structure near the Grand Floridian Resort. A permit application was submitted recently for a six to seven story T-shaped building to be connected to the existing resort via a covered walkway. They have not announced specific details or a timeline for the project, but rumor has it that it will be a vacation club resort. We've also heard a rumor that another vacation club facility is planned for the site of the former River Country Water Park adjacent to the Fort Wilderness campgrounds. And you know how we love to hear from our fans and to feature you whenever possible. So here's a portion of a very ambitious video project by Andy Johnson of DiscoverEpcot.com. Take a look. Right here every day, wood is round up. Come on, it's time to play. There's Jessie the Oldland Cowgirl. Bullseye, he's Woody's horse. He's a smart. Pete the old prospector and Woody the man himself.
Andy, that was brilliant. The video is called Epcot in 5,151 photographs and required him to take one small step at a time for each photo. He used a still in motion technique which took hours and hours of filming and, from what I understand, a sunburn and sore muscles were also involved. <laughs> Well, there's no sore muscles or sunburn involved in pie eating, but you may get a stomach ache for eating too much. And that's what the winners of our trivia question giveaway will be doing at the Great American Pie Festival. If you answer our trivia question correctly by email and are one of the four randomly chosen among the correct answers, you'll win a family four-pack admission to the 83,000 slice never-ending pie buffet at the festival in celebration April 9th and 10th. That's a $40 value. That's delicious. Get ready. Here's the question. On our YouTube channel at Attractions Magazine, in the video report from last year's American Pie Festival in celebration, what kind of pie does our kid reporter Mindy say is her favorite? Remember, do not post your answer. It must be emailed to info at attractionsmagazine.com. Four correct responses will be chosen at random to win a family four pack. Winners will be selected on Monday morning, April 4th at 9 a.m. Of course, it needs to be someone who plans to be in the area on the 9th or 10th. The Town of Celebration is located just outside of Disney World. The winners will be announced on next week's show. The contest details will also be listed following the credits for today's show. Good luck! This weekend, popular concert series are running in all the major theme parks. At Universal Studios' Mardi Gras concert series, you can see Sean Kingston on April 1st and Neo on the 2nd. And at the Epcot Flower Power Series, Starship starring Mickey Thomas will take the stage. This weekend will be the last for Viva La Musica, where you can see Ednia Nazaro at SeaWorld on Saturday and Ishmael Miranda on Sunday at Busch Gardens. If you prefer gardening tips, don't forget the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival, where you can sit in on a presentation by HTV star Tanya Nyack of Design to Sell. Well, thanks for everyone for tuning in to another broadcast of Orlando Attractions Magazine, the show. Now, there are several ways you can see our show and follow our news reports. On YouTube in HD. On iTunes, where you can subscribe. On Twitter, at Attractions. On Facebook.com slash Attractions Magazine. And of course, at AttractionsMagazine.com, where you can get more information on the stories we highlight on our show, sign up for our free weekly email newsletter, and much more. And from all of us here at Orlando Attractions Magazine, the show, Happy, Happy April, April Fool's Day, Day and have fun!